Welcome to the Deep Dive. Today, we're uh, looking into something pretty strange. The Boogosphere. It's Saturday, July 19th, 2025, almost 7 p.m. WIB. And yeah, the internet's still buzzing. It all started with this uh, peculiar X post from 15 News a few days back, July 15. Showed this uh, weird metallic sphere, right? Oh, <laughs> Quickly yeah. got nicknamed the Boogosphere. And the post had these two images. One is like the sphere being held. Yeah, against a desk. You can see it pretty clearly. But the second one, some dark blob in the sky, really indistinct. Uh huh. And the text, that's the hook, isn't it? Claiming the sphere comes alive at certain frequencies. Exactly. Comes alive. What does that even mean? Well, it immediately makes you think, doesn't it? What is this thing? You see those images, read that claim, and suddenly you're asking, is it ancient? Or something. Not from here, extraterrestrial. Or, you know, could it just be a modern thing, maybe misunderstood? Right, so many questions pop up, and that's really our mission for this deep dive. You listening right now, you're probably thinking the same things. So we've gathered what we could web results on, um, physics, archaeoacoustics. Ancient artifacts, ET research, the whole gamut, really. And look, we're not going to sit here and say this is the answer, because honestly, nobody knows for sure yet nope what we want to do is shine a light on the possibilities get you thinking critically we'll explore it together think of us as your guides through this hmm. well this Guga sphere enigma okay so where do we start the frequencies seem like the obvious place the post mentions specific numbers a hum between 330 and 340 hertz right it's sort of a low musical note then a higher response 1.3 to 1.5 kilohertz and that really deep pulse 2.4 hertz. Exactly. So just looking at it as a physical object, a solid metallic sphere, its natural frequency, how it wants to vibrate when you disturb it, that depends on basic stuff. Like its material, density, elasticity, shape, size, radius, all that. Yeah, engineers call it modal analysis. It predicts vibration patterns, but these specific frequencies, what could they mean? That's the question. Let's take the 2.4 hertz first. That's super low. It is. It's infrasound, way below the 20 hertz limit of human hearing. And what's interesting about infrasound is, well, it can have subtle effects, physical, maybe even psychological. Hmm. Huh. Like what? Well, some studies in architectural acoustics looking at, say, ancient chambers. Hmm. They suggest maybe low frequency resonance like this was used deliberately, maybe for rituals. Wow. Something you feel, not hear. That's creepy almost it's certainly intriguing then you have the 330 340 hertz that's audible yeah it's like a low musical note no. and the 1.3 to 1.5 kilohertz higher pitch right maybe something like the range of a human voice or perhaps it resonates with certain materials specifically is there any science behind a single object having multiple resonant frequencies like this oh absolutely there was a study i think 2019 journal of the acoustical society of america it showed that metallic objects even solid ones can have several resonant modes it's not random though it depends on uh the internal structure and significantly any surface engravings engravings the picture showed those didn't it intricate pattern Exactly. So that study gives us a possible scientific angle for why the Bugosphere might have this dance of resonance, as the Post called it. Okay, quick clarification, though. Is this related to Schumann resonance? I've heard that term. Good question. Schumann resonance is Earth's own electromagnetic field vibrating around 7.83 hertz. So probably not directly relevant here unless the sphere somehow interacts with the planet's fields. And that's a huge if. No proof of that. Got it. So the science makes sense in theory. Right. But the X post, it was super vague on how they measured. Yeah, that. big gap there. Did they hit it, rub it, play sounds at it? We don't know. And those engravings you mentioned, mm. could they be designed specifically to affect the vibrations, like tiny tuny forks or dampers? That's a fascinating thought. They could absolutely influence it. And this lack of detail, it's why skepticism is really important here, even on forums like Raelian's. Oh, yeah. What is it saying? Well, a key point raised is room acoustics. Could the room itself or the desk it was on be amplifying or distorting the frequencies? Uh, like an echo chamber effect almost. Exactly. To get real data, you'd need controlled tests. An anechoic chamber, a totally soundproof, echo-free room would be ideal. Right. Take the environment out of the equation. Precisely. And uh, that second image, the blurry thing in the sky. Yeah. It adds to the mystery, hints that maybe an environmental link, but it's so blurry. Scientifically, it's hard to draw any firm conclusions from it. It invites speculation, but also doubt. Okay, so the science is one angle. Intriguing, but needs way more data. What about history? Could this sphere, with its weird sounds and engravings, be like an ancient artifact? 
That's the next big possibility, and it brings us to archaeoacoustics. Which is? Basically, the study of sound in ancient places and with ancient objects. Sources like Ancient Origins talk about things like whistling bottles from pre-Columbian South America. Whistling bottles. Yeah, initially people thought they were just, you know, pots. But later research showed they create complex sounds. Maybe for rituals. Communication. We don't know. So the bucosphere could be something similar. A piece of ancient sound tech. It's definitely a possibility being floated. Especially when you bring in Columbianite. Columbianite, also called calatite. That's a type of tectite, right? Like mm. natural glass from a meteor impact. Exactly. And it's traditionally revered, believed to have spiritual properties, resonating with ancient cosmic wisdom, as one source put it. And Columbia links us to the Huizca people. Correct. The Huizca tribes were known for amazing gold work, complex spirituality. What if they crafted this sphere or found it? And engraved it with symbols meant to harness that vibrational energy. Precisely. Imagine that 2.4 hertz pulse. Maybe it mimics a heartbeat or subtle earth tremors. That could tie right into shamanic practices, maybe inducing trance states. That connects back to the infrasound idea. It does. And it hints that ancient cultures might have understood and used acoustics in ways we're only starting to rediscover. Think about resonant chambers in places like the Great Pyramid. Yeah, there's evidence of sophisticated acoustic design there. So maybe the bugosphere isn't alien. Maybe it's evidence of surprisingly advanced ancient human knowledge. And the name Buga. It points straight to Buga, Colombia, a city with Musca roots. Right. One hypothetical scenario mentioned in the background material was a local news report from 2025 saying it was found in an archaeological dig near there. Imagine if they analyzed the engravings and found clear Muisca symbols, stars, serpents. It would build a powerful narrative, connecting it to their cosmology, maybe ideas about communicating with the divine or the cosmos. Okay, that's a really compelling historical angle, but... Yeah. What about that thing in the sky? Ah, uh, yes, the second image, the blurry sphere. That's what really ignites the extraterrestrial hypothesis. It does kind of scream UFO, even if it's indistinct. And that's where something like the Galileo Project becomes relevant. Remind me, what's their focus? Their mission is specifically to look for physical evidence of ET technology, actual artifacts, not just radio signals like SETI. And they got funding recently, right? Setting up observatories. Yeah, a decent grant in 2024. They're building systems designed to spot exactly these kinds of anomalous objects. So could the sky object be one of theirs? I mean, one of the things they're looking for. It's possible, but again, the image is blurry. Drone, weather balloon, lens flare, or maybe a small probe. Okay, let's entertain the EP idea for a second. If yeah. the Buga sphere is alien tech. Then maybe the resonance isn't just a property, maybe it's a signal. A beacon. Calling home. Yeah. Or interacting with that sky object. Could be. One of the hypothetical sources, a Fox News piece, rightly urged caution, said we'd need spectroscopic analysis of the sphere. Let's see what it's made of. Exactly. If it's some alloy not found naturally on Earth, and if the sky object showed a similar composition, well, that would be huge. That would be game changing. And the frequencies themselves. Could they be the message? Maybe. 1.3 to 1.5 kilohertz is audible, usable for communication like early radio. Mm -hmm. And 2.4 hertz, that infrasound, travels long distances, penetrates material. So like a robust signal. Perhaps. There are fringe theories, you know, on places like Reddits or UFOs, about artifacts designed to interact with environments or signal ships using resonance. Fascinating idea. Well, I heard but, and it's a big but. Without knowing where the sphere came from or what that sky object actually is and where it was going, it's pure speculation, a massive leap. Okay, absolutely. We need that dose of skepticism. Let's circle back to the more grounded criticisms. Definitely. That room acoustics issue you mentioned seems like a major one. It really is. Think about it. The desk, the room, even the microphone used could create weird resonances or amplify specific frequencies. Like feedback? Sort of, or standing waves. There was a 2023 study in Applied Acoustics about how small rooms can really distort perceived resonance, especially in those frequency bands mentioned, like 330 hertz and 1.5 kilohertz. So the sphere might not even be making those sound strongly on its own. It's possible the environment is significantly coloring what was measured. That's why you need controlled tests. Like using lasers to measure the vibrations directly. Yeah. Laser Doppler vibrometry, it measures the surface movement without touching it, avoiding interference. That would give much cleaner data. Makes sense. Hmm. And the sky object besides ET probe, what else? Oh, plenty of mundane options. Bird, balloon, drone, even just a trick of the light, a lens flare. 
And the Galileo project, guys, they wouldn't just rely on one blurry photo, we right? No, they emphasize high-res images, multiple sensors, tracking data. This X post has none of that. So standard procedure for NASA or similar agencies would be? Classify it as unidentified aerial phenomena or UAP, but likely leaning towards misidentification unless there's corroborating data radar, satellite imagery, multiple witnesses. Okay. What about the sphere itself? The engravings look cool, but are they definitely ancient? Another excellent point. Could they be modern fakes? Reproductions. How would you even tell? You'd need metallurgical analysis. Mm. Techniques like X-ray fluorescence can tell you the exact elemental composition of the metal without damaging it. That could reveal if it's a known ancient alloy or something modern. And the polish, you mentioned that earlier. Yeah, that shiny surface is a bit suspicious for something supposedly ancient. Metals usually corrode over time unless they were preserved incredibly well or maybe treated later. It raises questions about authenticity or handling. Okay, so many angles, so many questions still. Given all this, what are the next logical steps? How do we move forward trying to understand this thing? Well, on the science side, definitely replication. Build models with similar dimensions, test resonance in controlled labs, compare results to theoretical predictions. And maybe reach out to the Galileo project about that sky object. Use their gear. Absolutely. Proper telescopes, spectrographs, try to get real data on it, rule out known objects. And if the historical angle pans out, if it is Muisca, for example. Then it's all about cultural preservation. This could be an incredibly significant artifact. Needs careful archaeological study protection. Definitely. Maybe display it in a place like the Gold Museum in Bogota, put it in context with Muisca culture and ancient sound practices. It could rewrite some history. And what about the public interest? This thing went viral. That public fascination is powerful. Maybe harness it. Citizen science projects. Like people reporting similar finds. Using AI tools maybe to sift through data. Could be. Fostering that global conversation, turning curiosity into a collective search for answers. It's an interesting thought. So here we are, July 19th, 2025. The Bugosphere is still, yeah, a riddle wrapped in resonance. Mm. We've looked at the science behind the frequencies, the possibility of it being an ancient artifact with deep cultural meaning. And the maybe wilder idea of it being extraterrestrial sparked by that blurry sky photo. We've tried to lay out these different paths for you, the listener, but always with that critical eye, you know? <laughs> Skepticism is key. Question things, verify. Absolutely. I think the Bogosphere is just a fantastic example of how one sort of intriguing clue can branch out in so many directions. It forces us to connect dots across science, history, maybe even further afield. It really shows how complex finding the truth can be. It requires looking from all sides. Precisely. Observation, context, critical thinking, all essential. Okay, so here's where it gets really interesting for me, thinking about this. Imagine what other frequencies of knowledge are out there. What other mysteries, hmm. things maybe hidden in plain sight, like this sphere might have been, mm -hmm. other forgotten technologies maybe, unknown phenomena. Resonating just beyond what we can currently detect. Exactly. Just waiting for us to figure out how to listen, how to tune in. Makes you wonder what else is out there, singing its own quiet song, doesn't it?